floor. I think we are going to have uh, some time towards the end of the session, uh, like to have some collective thoughts. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, moving on uh, with our next presenter, Jamal. Um, Angeliova. Yeah. Please, she's, uh, she's going to talk to us about Central Asia Sand and Dust Storms Initiative. Yes, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, my name is Jamal Anaklicheva. I'm working in the UNCCD Secretariat, uh, responsible for the Europe and Central Asian countries. And uh, when we talk about the Central Asian countries, we mean five uh, countries uh, in that bigger Asian region. And I'm really happy that all S Central Asian countries are present uh, in this scope and actually present now in the room. Um, of course, Central Asian region is known for its natural aridity, of course, the vast uh, desert territory with a sparse vegetation. And so therefore, this is the region with a natural source uh, of sand and dust storm, but it also, um, um, during the last century, unfortunately, it also became the source of the anthropogenic uh, sand and dust storm. Um, although we call it a natural disaster, in many cases it has the anthropogenic uh, origin so that it is aggravated by the human activities. So, and very briefly I will tell you about the initiative which we are proposing for the Central Asian countries. In fact, um, we're just responding to requests uh, of Central Asian countries uh, which uh, approached the Secretariat uh, after the last conference of the Party 13 when we have endorsed the policy advocacy decision on the sand and dust storm. So the Central Asian countries uh, approached us uh, for support, the technical and methodological support um, to apply the framework of the sand and dust storm uh, developed by the UNCCD. So what is planned now for the Central Asian countries is uh, more uh, of a research type of initiative where we will train and capacitate the national agencies in application of a common standard methodology for risk and vulnerability assessment of the sand and dust storms. So, and we will also work on the source-based map for the Central Asia, which will be also a part of uh, research and the activities which is implemented by uh, DRR, by ESCAT, um, uh, joining also the Southwest Asia. What we also expect as one of the outcome of these um, national and regional level activities in Central Asia, that the Central Asian countries would be uh, able to establish the dialogue on the sand and dust storm because so far this, the dialogue on the sand and dust storms in Central Asia uh, take place more at the expert level. We would like to bring it more to the policy level. So and we hope that uh, the Central Asian countries would be able to identify the actions needed to establish such a platform where the SDS would be also taken into account. And we hope that with those results which this project would achieve, there would be a very solid evidence in, ha in hand uh, to present it to the policy makers. Um, so we have five Central Asian countries which are interested to participate in this initiative, but of course to make this initiative uh, um, coherent across the region, we also uh, collaborating with the Central Asian Regional Environmental Center, uh, located based in Kazakhstan, but uh, has its national offices in all the countries, uh, to assist us uh, with the uh, regional analysis, which will be based from the national analysis of five countries. Oh, now I'm on the screen. Um, so, uh, and we really hope that this collaboration with the CARAC will help us to establish a very uh, inclusive platform where we can work together with the different uh, uh, technical partners, regional, sub-regional and regional technical partners. So, and 
when I was preparing for the sun and dust storm day, I also went through some of the publication of the literature. And in fact, I also would agree with the presenters uh, before, uh, who spoke before me, that there is still a controversial uh, um, research or the outcomes uh, of the research in the sand and dust storm. Some of them saying that actually the, uh, the sand and dust storm uh, in frequency is, is now being reduced in the Central Asia. But uh, I mean, as many of us, we, we were evidence, uh, we were witness of the uh, severe dust and salt storm which hit um, in many countries in Central Asia last year, and the economic impact is still, as now I, we heard that it's be, it was calculated, the economic loss and damage. Um, so this is, um, I think the more research and more evidence uh, of, of what is happening in terms of the sand and dust storm for Central Asia being an, a, a source and the impact area uh, for the SDS is still to be done. And I hope that this research will really contribute to that. And in two years, uh, I would be really happy to see the Central Asian countries presenting on the result of this uh, research uh, in Central Asia. And using this opportunity, I also would like to thank the government of South Korea for supporting this initiative. And I think all Central Asian countries will join me in um, uh, appreciating the continuous support of the government of South Korea and also mentioning probably the question which you have raised uh, on the uh, technologies uh, of the drought and salt resistance uh, sustainable land management. We are working jointly with the WOCAT now uh, for identifying the best practices. And in fact, now the science and policy interface of UNCCD uh, issued one of the special report on the um, the uh, activities and the measures to mitigate the drought impact. And uh, most probably we will have the, uh, the drought smart sustainable land management activities and criteria uh, developed uh, and uh, worked together with the VOCAT so we could also uh, propose and classify uh, some of the activities uh, in a VOCAT database, uh, which would be uh, applicable for those uh, conditions. So thank you very much. So that was a really brief information, so also to save the time. Thank you. That, that was uh, quite uh, concentrated and very useful information. Thank you so much for your uh, remarks. Uh, any, any comment or any question uh, to Jamal for her uh, remarks? Uh, like if, if I would ask you, like, you know, very briefly, uh, in order for Central Asian countries to, to achieve this aspiration, what will be your uh, uh, like roadmap or what will be like the most important things that they need to address on their end in order to, to be able to come together to achieve uh, this aspiration? If, if you would tell them like, you know, uh, one, two, three, like, you know, so in bullet points, like very quickly, uh, just to help them out. Well, I think at the national level, it is really to identify the relevant national institution who would be working uh, on uh, data provision for, uh, for this research. And maybe the second one, uh, well, the political readiness uh, at the country level. And the third one is the regional collaboration among the Central Asian countries because it has a transboundary uh, nature of this effect, yes. Thank you so much. Thank that, you. that was quite helpful. Uh, moving on with uh, Jose from WMO. He's going to be our next presenter. Uh, talk about support to send the dust storms monitoring and forecast for the Sahelian countries. For those who are looking into the agenda and thinking that I skipped a beer, the transboundary cooperation they already presented uh, in the previous session. That's why we moved on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jose Camacho. I'm going to uh, make a presentation on our activities uh, on sun and dust forecast 
in uh, the Sahelian countries. As uh, well, some of you, we have we made several presentations in the last two days, so I'm not sure what uh, you are aware of, uh, what is the system, but uh, WMO is a UN uh, specialized agency that uh, is related with, uh, to deal with uh, climate, weather, and uh, water, and in, uh, the atmospheric part of the environment, or the atmospheric relations with environment. So, as many other presenters have said, there is uh, sun and dust uh, thunderstorms. Uh, sun, and, sun and dust uh, storms are uh, uh, an issue that are multidisciplinary in the, uh, to, to make a, a right approach. There are interactions between uh, soils, lands, uh, human action, atmospheric uh, components. I mean, different uh, problem related with uh, transport, but also with optical properties. And finally, with also associated with uh, precipitation uh, mechanisms. And finally, the dust comes back to, to, to land and uh, make uh, a lot of impacts. So there is a, a complex issue. And uh, from the, the atmospheric uh, side, well, you see the long list of, we're not going to repeat that, the, that long list of, of effects. But the WMO is the approaching by building a, a team, a global federation of partners that's called uh, San Andas Warning Advisory System. There is, uh, you could find uh, information about this in, in, our, in, the, in the web, web page. There is uh, more than 10 years of work behind, and uh, there are med services, but also other institutions that are cooperating. Research uh, providers of models, mostly, so think that we are uh, dealing with the mostly, but not unique, uh, uniquely with the atmospheric uh, part of the, of the problem. So, now, right now we have three nodes operating of this uh, sun and dust uh, system. The first and most, uh, the oldest one is uh, operated in Barcelona by the Spanish uh, Med Service plus the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and covers Europe, uh, north uh, of Africa and Middle East. The second in, uh, in operation is uh, the Chinese or the Asian node that's uh, operated by the Chinese Meteorological uh, Administration. And you could see that uh, there is an overlap of the, the areas of responsibility in the Middle East, exactly. So that uh, we can envisage that could be a problem, but could be an advantage, because you could have all those uh, countries that are in that area. You will uh, benefit from uh, combined action from both nodes. The third node is still in uh, oper the third no is still in operation, is uh, in, in, in practice, we can say, is uh, the Caribbean one, the Caribbean, the American one, the Pan-American. So the node will be hosted by an institution in Barbados, in the, in the Lesser Antilles and uh, the small islands, close in the Caribbean Sea, and uh, is expected to deal with uh, problems that are less known, but uh, they are present on the desertic and uh, arid areas of both uh, Northern and Southern America. No. Sorry. No. That, I'm showing that slide because uh, we are, we're, now we are moving to Western Africa. But uh, let me show you our uh, fund, funding source. No? Is the, those uh, that you know a little bit the, the, the source of funding for uh, climate, uh, climate projects, this is the less known but uh, is uh, relatively effective. It's uh, the Climate Risk Early Warning System Fund created by the, that association of, uh, of countries 
led by France mostly, but uh, there are this, uh, this list is Australia, France, Germany, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Switzerland, plus several observers that could be also in the future contribute to that uh, fund. A relatively a small projects relate, uh, targeting the developing of uh, pilots of early warning, but not uh, weather only, but also climate warning. And climate warning most of time means drought. So we are targeting uh, drought uh, and uh, severe weather events in, in Western Africa. Here is the, the scheme for Burkina Faso. It's the first uh, cruise project that's led by WMO. Most of the projects, we also have the support of World Bank. Sometimes World Bank lead the project, sometimes us, but we always cooperate. There are, in terms of, uh, there are two bodies, two components. One is uh, enforcement or uh, uh, support the development and the capacity building at country level on observation, on, uh, on models, on uh, early warning in terms of, for instance, uh, sun and dust. And the second is uh, application services on agriculture and on uh, warnings in flood, most, in that case, in urban floods. So we have two approaches, climate warning plus a severe event in both in relation with the lack of water or the surplus of water. Here are the products that the Sun and Dust node in Barcelona is delivering. And in the upper, you have the forecast. But there is a need for calibration. There is a need to deploy a low, uh, is, is, we can try to make low-cost uh, instruments in order to analyze the aerosol uh, optical uh, properties and to rely with uh, the model outputs. So this is one target. And second target is also to make a comparison with the satellite uh, pictures. You can see here is uh, the most uh, known uh, product from uh, the UMETSAT uh, uh, standard channels. It's a combination of three uh, channels that provides you a good idea, not accurate, but a good idea about the, how the, the dust is uh, going and, uh, and uh, on and, 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 out, and out. And uh, here's the operational product. Uh, I download uh, today that product, so remember that uh, as in India, uh, in Burkina Faso, is the, the rainy season. That means it's no, no dust, mostly no dust. So there is a, that's why it's green. But notice that we have the sub, a, a provincial division. So the warnings are delivered at provincial level. The basis of that product is at the at a statistical threshold. So we have the, all the events in, I believe it's 20 years you know, of model outputs. We made a threshold that's 80%, and uh, that's the minimum to rise uh, a first pre-warning. I believe when it rises 90, this is a second level, and 95% is the third level. This needs to be calibrated in terms of real observation. So that's we are mm, making that, uh, that work, generally with the, the Barcelona team. And uh, mm, there is a need also for, uh, for measure impacts. So that's the, we have three areas in Burkina Faso that we need to also to, to um, make a calibration by, observa by uh, ground observations. At the, especially measure the impacts, the possible impacts in agricultural communities. So we expect to deploy, to, this is operational. We are going uh, to improve the system. But uh, now we have also plans to expand to other Sahelian countries, Western Sahelian countries, uh, that system. And we, will, we plan to do in the coming in next year. So then we are offering that, uh, that opportunity to build uh, a, a national and a regional uh, uh, sun and dust uh, war uh, warning system for the Sahel. I believe that's, uh, that's all. That's my last. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks.
Thanks, Jose, for, uh, for your presentation. Uh, quite promising effort for the Sahara region. Um, do we have any questions uh, or comments uh, from the floor? Please. Can we have the mic, please? are of course very good scientific models and uh, these are of course very good scientific models which are being exhibited here but what I would like to add that uh, what about the indigenous people who are aware of every nook and corner of the places they their advice their information is taken into consideration in uh, or not uh, or if not, why? Uh, because it has been the experience in India in Andaman Nicobar and all this, you know, when the tsunami came, they had their knowledge beforehand. And all the tribals, etc., they climbed the trees. So, you know, you know, these are the things, indigenous knowledge, which also needs to be collaborated, it needs to be supplemented with the hard facts data of, for modeling. Hello? Thank you very much for that uh, pertinent question. Uh, yes, the uh, traditional knowledge needs to be taken in account, not in, but uh, the sense that you need to um, have a di dialogue with uh, communities, indigenous, not non-indigenous, uh, the, 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 the peasants, not the people that are living in the, in the, in the rural uh, world. And uh, the way that we are talking with them, both sides, if indigenous and not indigenous, it's uh, to use the local radios. Local radio broadcasters are uh, persons that are in direct contact with them. They know the, what the, will be the, the needs. They know their language and they know the rules to communicate. In the case of indigenous communities, there are specific rules that have to be respected, but we transfer that responsibility to those uh, local broadcasters. Sometimes there could be radios or could be specific persons that have that, uh, that role to make the bridge with the indigenous. And of course, the, the, it's just not to deliver the information. It's also to take feedback, have the impression, and to let's say, to have a dialogue, a structure, an institutional dialogue, a structural dialogue from the final users to the providers of the, the information. So we are taking in account as much as we can because you know this uh, sometimes is, needs a lot of force. Sometimes we made a first iteration, but we need a second and even improve the, the method. Thank you, Jose. Thanks a lot. Uh, any further comments or questions? We have time for one more comment, if any. Uh, yes, please. The mic, please. Yes. Can you hear him? Yes. Thank you very much. I was waiting for the end of these nice presentations. And I wanted to point up, or to take up the point that uh, Jamal was making. And at the beginning, I saw a lot of vulnerability assessments, but I didn't see a vulnerability of the different land use land management practices in terms of causing the problem or in terms of reducing it. All kinds of climatic soil factors are taken into consideration. And then we heard also from uh, the two presentations from uh, Icarda as well as from Jamal that they're pointing out it is very important to really assess in the regions what kind of land management practices are actually causing more or less of the problem and which practices could reduce it. And that would then help also to see what kind of interventions people at the local level could make to reduce the problem or, or to even avoid that the problem is building up. So I, I was very pleased to hear that uh, initiative that should be supporting the countries in the regions to build up the knowledge, was also mentioned in the last point, the knowledge of how, how to address the problem. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's a quite uh, interesting comment, and uh, maybe it, it's going to give us um, a, like an early start of the discussion uh, before we take our last two speakers for the session. Jamal or Enrique, would you guys uh, would like to uh, comment uh, briefly on that? Um, I, I obviously I agree on the, on this that uh, uh, the land use uh, it's. Uh, is the one of the, st the key starting point to ensure that we are able to package uh, scalable solution. Obviously, we need uh, to partner, and so we need the support of countries because uh, there are also some enabling factor at the policy level or uh, other aspect that helps them to scale and ensure that we can mitigate uh, sources effectively. And so I, I, I fully agree on that. Uh, what is important is that we combine all together the different disciplines in order that, as we said before, to have an interdisciplinary approach uh, of the different technology that now are, are more and more uh, accessible. Uh, so this might Maybe briefly, I would also comment that uh, we will 